Normally, I don't find myself doing sort of like follow-up reviews of products that I've shown on the channel, um, but I feel like just for your own purposes as a consumer and potential customer of these companies, that it might be a beneficial thing for me to start doing. A little while back, I had done a video just kind of giving an overview, a demo, and a review of the Schecter C6, the Hellraiser C6, their basics baritone model that I just happened to find a lefty version of. It comes strung with basic strings, but since getting it, I've been using it as a baritone with baritone strings. And I've used it on recordings, including the latest single from my band, When Everything Comes Crashing Down. And overall, I've been really happy with this guitar. I've had no complaints since getting it. But then something weird happened. Recently, someone left a comment on the video asking me about whether or not I've experienced any bending in the tailpiece of the bridge. To which I said no, and I also really didn't have a grasp on the severity of what they were talking about. At least not until they sent me an email with pictures. And the pictures I got, when I looked at them, at first glance, I was convinced that it was photoshopped. It didn't look like a real thing. So I was like, I was perplexed because I've never seen this sort of thing happen on a guitar before. And so I thought maybe this was just some sort of like weird anomaly that was going on with this one particular person who had this model guitar. So naturally, the next thing I did was go and grab my guitar and look at the tailpiece on the bridge. And when I picked it up, I could not believe what I saw. You can't see it from here, but there's a slight curvature in the tailpiece. It's starting to bend. So yeah, this is a weird scenario um, that I think is worth discussing. So let's do it. Good afternoon, everyone. How's it going? I hope everyone's doing well. If you're new here, hi, I'm Miles. I do music stuff. And as I said in the intro, one of the things that I'm thinking about doing going forward with this channel is not just doing reviews of new products as far as music stuff, but also doing sort of follow-up reviews of products because especially in the realm of guitars and basses and string instruments of that sort, what can happen is that you initially have an impression of the instrument and then after you've had some time go by, things change. Depending on your environment, the wood of the neck of your guitar can shrink and then the fret ends can start to poke out and things like that. So yeah, if that's something that you would like to see, let me know in the comments and um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. And before we go any further, if you haven't done it already and you like what you're seeing here, be sure to hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button. It makes my videos more visible to more people and uh, it really helps out overall and it's free. So come on, do it, do it. So yeah, recently I had sent off two of my guitars to my buddy Harry who has done the repairs on all my instruments for years now. He's amazing, he does great work. And anyone who's in the Bergen County, New Jersey area, I highly recommend going to him to get all your setups and stuff done, cause he's great. While I was there, I'm sitting and I'm talking to him about this whole situation with my Schecter Hellraiser C6. And he too was perplexed by it cause he's never heard of such a thing. Um, there's the typical sort of bending you see in the tailpiece of a guitar where like someone drops it or like it gets pushed down somehow and now it's sitting crooked on the body of the guitar. But this is like weird. It's really weird. Like initially when I got sent those pictures of that other guy's guitar, the immediate conclusion that I drew was that the tension from the strings, the bass six strings, was pulling on the tailpiece so much that it was causing it to be pulled upward, which I could see being a possibility because you have all six strings, they're wound, they're gonna have more mass to them and therefore more tension is going to be applied to the points that the strings are being strung around. And so I figured that was the case and that if I put baritone strings on this guitar, I wouldn't run into this issue. And yet here we are today. I thought this video would be an important one to make because when I first put out my initial review of this guitar, a lot of people showed interest in it because it's it's a baritone guitar with active humbucker pickups on it. And 
they're, those are kind of hard to come by for the most part. You have a couple different models from ESP um, and maybe Ibanez, I think. I don't know off the top of my head. But otherwise, you're looking at more vintage style baritone guitars like Dan Electro's and things of that nature. Also, the video that Guitar World Magazine did on this guitar sucks. It's really bad. And I got a lot of gripes with Guitar World Magazine and I don't know. I don't know if that's ever going to be a thing that changes. So when my video dropped, everyone was like, finally, a review that's worthwhile on this guitar that I've always been curious about. Because even on Schecter's part, the marketing they've done around it isn't very consistent. Because they say that it's a bass six, but they're also like, it's kind of a baritone, you know. It's like beating around the bush in terms of describing what the instrument truly is. But in any case, since getting this guitar, I've been really happy with it. But now let's talk about this issue with the bridge. So the bridge system that's on here, allegedly, is a Tone Pros system bridge with brass saddles on the main bridge portion of it. I've never had any tuning issues as far as intonation. Everything's fine. The Really, the only issue that I have with this guitar and this bridge is this weird thing down here. And given that it's a Tone Pros brand bridge system, it seems like the type of thing that's really out of character for them because they make really good stuff. So I'm, I'm unsure what to even do moving forward. Like I'm gonna reach out to Tone Pros directly, but also I'm gonna reach out to Schecter and say, what what is this? What's the deal with this? Because for the longest time, I've sang the praises of companies like Schecter for having lefty models of most of their guitars that they offer. Unlike companies like Fender and Gibson, where they put out signature models of guitars and they're strictly righties and they're in limited quantities. Same thing with other companies like even Ibanez, who happen to have more lefties than Fender and Gibson combined. But in this case, Schecter's been at the forefront of those groups because they've always had stuff that is unique, but I'm also able to get my hands on. So if I wanted a fan fret seven string lefty, it's probably gonna be a Schecter. If there's a unique bass that's available on their website, they more than likely have a lefty of it. So again, these are the reasons why I gravitate towards Schecter as a whole. And I would hate to think that Schecter is one of those companies that will sell you a product, wave goodbye after they take your money, and then ride off into the sunset because I've dealt with companies like that before and there's countless numbers of them that are like that. And it's a bad look and it makes me not wanna buy anything from you ever again. A prime example of this, and this is me just talking to the owners of early 2000s Ibanez RGs out there. Have you ever tried to get a replacement saddle for your bridge? How's that been? With my Ibanez RG, I remember I had stripped out one of the saddles on the bridge, their Edge Pro or whatever it is. It's a Floyd Rose knockoff. And when I reached out to Ibanez directly because there weren't any outside distributors that had those parts available, when I reached out to them, they said, oh, we don't make that anymore. Sorry. And from there, I was redirected to an outside website from Ibanez called IbanezRules.com. I don't know if there's any direct affiliation between IbanezRules.com and Ibanez, the company, but basically it's a guy who has a vast inventory of old Ibanez guitar parts. So if you need a bridge, or you need that little block that locks the string in place in the saddle on the bridge, or you need a locking nut, you need a screw, one of these things, he's probably got them. And because he knows that you need it, you're gonna be paying a buttload of money to get that part. And I did that a number of times until I finally got fed up and figured out how to go about outfitting this guitar with a Floyd Rose. The spacing of the strings is imperfect. Like the low E string, if I'm not careful, will dip off the side, but I'm careful. It wasn't a perfect drop-in setup situation with this bridge on here, but now that it's in here, my guitar works as it should. And if I have run into a problem with this bridge, I know that I can get components to replace the broken ones. And in the case with this guitar, it's not really an issue that I can kind of just like not worry about as far as this tailpiece on this bridge, because 
the more that this bends, what's happening is that the curvature is allowing there to be less tension on these middle sets of strings. And it's gonna be a whole pain in the ass to deal with. So what do I do moving forward? What I'm going to do and what I would advise other people that happen to have this guitar in their possession to do moving forward is to reach out to Tone Pros and to reach out to Schechter directly um, as best as you can. These companies tend to not have any real sort of customer service. It tends to be an automated message that you get in response to your inquiries. And if you're lucky, you get to interact with a human who is willing to try to see your problem to the end and find a solution for it. But I'm gonna reach out and I'm gonna see if I can at least find a proper replacement for this tailpiece. Because from what I understand, it's it's different than the typical one. I don't know, I have to look further into it to find out for sure. Like for example, you can't see it here, but on the side of the tailpiece itself, there's Allen screws that are locking it onto the posts. So that's my plan moving forward as someone who already owns this guitar. But I feel like if you're someone who has this guitar for sale, you should probably put it away somewhere and not make it available for customers to try to purchase because it's not going to function properly and they're not going to know that until further down the line after they've gotten it in their possession and brought it home. The music retail world is very odd um, because you have instances where you have the ability to return a product that you figure out after purchasing it that it's not actually what you thought it was and that you don't want it anymore. So like places like Sweetwater, Reverb.com, for the most part, um, they're pretty good about doing returns on stuff and canceling orders and whatnot. But let's say you're dealing with some digital software like a neural DSP plugin or something like that. You can't return that. But there's also other instances where you have a long-term problem that doesn't start to show until way down the line. So now it's outside of the realm of the return policy of any store and you're just stuck. So really it's more of a problem that roots from the actual manufacturer of the product. So it would be really cool if like I could reach out to Schecter and get an answer directly from them about what I should do moving forward. Because aside from this issue, I think this is a great instrument. I'm not going to say I'm not going to take back what I said in my initial review. This guitar is still good. But this bridge issue, it's it's uniquely stupid. <laughs> but yeah, moving forward, I'll keep you guys posted on what's gonna happen with this guitar and my efforts to get a replacement component as far as the tailpiece. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably go back over it in another video. That's really all I got for you guys for today. I just wanted to talk about this issue that I'm having so that in the case that you're looking to buy this guitar, that you go into your purchase with that in mind or you just simply avoid buying it altogether or if you already own it you can know what to expect further down the line because inevitably it's most likely that you're going to run into this problem as well i hope you found this video to be interesting and informative and if you haven't already be sure to hit that like button hit the subscribe button what did i tell you before i'm telling you it helps me out and it's free do the thing and a big shout out to all my patrons over at Patreon that make these videos possible. And if you'd like to help the channel out by becoming a patron, I'll leave a link in the description where you can go and check out the different tiers of benefits that come along with your subscription over there. That's all for now, guys. Uh, this wasn't supposed to be my next video, but uh, I got another video coming up real soon. It'll be out next weekend. So be sure to stick around for that. And uh, I'll see you then. Stay safe. Keep playing. Peace.